Hello again everyone, Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about Neptune in the second house in a natal chart. Now some of you may remember when I first started my YouTube astrology channel, I did a series on the Neptune placements in the houses. They were a little bit concise. And some people may have referred to them as snappy, so what I decided to do is make another series on them in which the videos would be a little bit longer and more descriptive. So anyway, first thing up is, well, Neptune in the second house is comparable to Neptune in Taurus, but naturally you've got a blend in the zodiac sign. Uh, with this Neptune in Taurus in the second house naturally could be different than Neptune in Scorpio in the second house as an example. Now, um, the thing about Neptune in astrology is it's connected with dreams and fantasies. So, uh, you know, people with this placement may often fantasize about, you know, money, um, accumulating possessions, matters with resources. Um, attainment of dreams and fantasies may be strongly tied into one's self-worth, self-esteem, how one feels about themselves. Uh, dreams and fantasies may be pursued in a very persistent fashion. Remember, the second house is uh, the house of Taurus, the house that corresponds with the zodiac sign Taurus. Um, it could be doing dreams and fantasies may be tied into banking, finance, you know, working as a pawnbroker, maybe even a stockbroker, you know, some kind of Taurus related uh, profession. It's simply having creature comforts, peace, stability, tranquility in one's life. Now, Neptune in astrology is also connected with inspiration. So, you know, if you have this placement in your natal chart, there may be a lot of inspiration in terms of uh, making money and generating income, you know, matters uh, pertaining to possessions, the acquisition of material items, and it could be, you know, you know just creature comforts in general, um, having peace, stability, tranquility in one's life, and also, um, you know, matters that may help one in terms of their um, self-worth. You know, say if somebody has a Neptune in Scorpio in the second house, it could be where a person may be inspired in terms of, you know, uh, making a major change or transformation, being resilient, dealing with crisis, maybe tied into the to one's self-worth and self-esteem. And also, um, you may be, you know, inspired to do things that require methodical energy, persistence, patience, perseverance. And um, another thing, too, is um, as far as Neptune goes in astrology, Neptune is also associated with, um, you know, hidden adversaries, hidden enemies, you know, people. You know, for example, maybe impersonating you know themselves as friends, but are secretly enemies, and these people may um, figure prominently. Actually, it could be those that are in one's monetary situation. It could be um, you know, it's a lot of cases. You know, if somebody's a hidden enemy, naturally they may affect the monetary situation to one's detriment. They may be strongly involved with one's uh, material items resources, possessions, even possibly the development of one's latent talents and abilities. And, you know, hidden adversaries may also, you know, take on, you know, like a, you know, Taurian, you know, like qualities, because keep in mind, again, the second house does correspond with the zodiac sign Taurus, and those hidden enemies, you know, can be people, you know, that are, you know, actually appear trustworthy, you know, patient, persevering, persistent, tenacious, money conscious. They may be people that are also greedy and avaricious. Um, so anyway, well, Neptune is also connected with what's nebulous, unclear, and obscure. So if you have Neptune positive in the second house in your natal chart, you know, things that are um, you know, nebulous and unclear to you may often be you know, they may be tied in with one's values, one's self-worth, self-esteem, how one feels about his or herself. It may be, you know, what's nebulous and unclear, you know, may often be a monetary situation. 
Um, it could be matters with buying and selling. Maybe there's more confusion, you know, say, on the quality of an item and, you know, whether it's worth such and such, you know, more so than most people on average, um, you know, in terms of evaluating, like, the value of a possession or something that you may buy, as an example, as a potential possession or even something you're trying to sell to somebody in terms of assessing the value of it. And even as far as the development of the latent talents and abilities, you know, how you're going to go about them, maybe even what those latent talents and abilities may be. And also, too, you know, keep in mind the second house is also associated with the death of a the significant other. So if you're in a situation where your significant other, you're around when this happens and, you know, that person passes before you do, you know, those things might even be, you know, nebulous and unclear to you as well. Um, Neptune is also associated with idealism and being, you know, as far as idealistic, being idealistic. Now, if you have Neptune posited in the second house in your natal chart, you may be very, you know, idealistic in terms of what, you know, the money, the income you may generate. But guard against being overly unrealistic in those matters as well. And just in terms of matters of buying and selling, it could be the money that you may make in that, and in, in buying, and you know, in buying and selling um, items, as an example. And also, um, in terms of, you know, um, just in in general ide idealism in terms of the accumulation of material possessions, the resources that you have. You know, ability, you know, to be persistent, to stay with things, you know, things that are, you know, maybe you know, tourist related, such as gardening and cultivation. It could simply be, you know, the growth of something that you're trying to, you know, as far as what you're trying to plant and grow in a, in a garden, something that's even as simple as that. Excuse me. And also, too, you know, when you look at um, Neptune astrology, it's also connected with what, you know, things that are dissolving and dissipation. Maybe this person has dissolving assets, and I'm, I'm being flippant with that. But anyway, um, the second house, keep in mind, does correspond again with the zodiac sign Taurus. So it could be some kind of, you know, dissolving, dissipation, weakness. It could be associated, you know, with the throat, the neck the thyroid, the voice, um, in some examples. It could be material items. It could be where something reaches a point where, you know, you, where material items may dissolve just simply because they may lack significance at some point. So you may be someone that often sacrifices material objects and items. And also just certain values that you have, you know, which could actually be, could be for better or for worse. It could be the dissolving dissipation of those things that you value. And um, also to, um, Neptune in astrology is connected with deception and duplicity. So you need to guard against these matters and, mo and things in monetary matters. Um, you know, try to avoid you know, like the get rich quick schemes, the things that sound very enticing, monetary that sound too good to be true, because you know this placement may give a certain proclivity um, for financial fraud, being deceived by others that are just you know willing to tell you whatever just to get you to sign up and, you know, buy, you know, invest or buy something. Um, matters with, you know, your possessions as well, buying and selling, you know, it's very important, you know, with imperative, I would say, with this placement, and to make sure, you know, if you're buying an item that you assess it thoroughly, that you ascertain its actual worth before you know, making the purchase on it because this place may give a certain propensity to be deceived in those matters. And just um, in terms of just having you know, your peace, your creature comfort, stability, there may be some self-deception in terms of what you feel you're going to attain as far as that goes at times. So, well, Neptune is also associated with psychic receptivity. So if you have Neptune in the second house, well, it could be in terms of monetary matters, uh, you know, money that you're going to make, or, you know, say if you're looking for, 
you know, something, if there's a lost possession or item, maybe you're using intuition in order to find it, you know, missing items, you know, matters that are, you know, connected, you know, I would say as well, you know, with resources, um, you know, in terms of, you know, things that are connected with money, your possessions, and also too, you know, second house is also associated with our self-worth, and you do things that you know you think you know may may affect it whether it's to your detriment or a positive way uh you know these things you may have strong intuition um about you know as um some examples and and whether and it could be just something connected to like with a taurus like profession because you know, this is the second house that corresponds with Taurus. You know, it could be something if you're working in finance or banking, working as a pawnbroker or agriculture. You know, things that are connected with those fields you may have certain intuition for. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube Astrological segment. Until next time, Edwin Leonard saying, stay well.